Good afternoon, Chairman. I can confirm it is just after four o'clock. The live stream has commenced and we are ready to start the meeting. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the development control meeting of the 17th of February 2021. I'd like to advise that today we'll be using Zoom to provide a live stream to members of the public. And please, can we ask that you bear with us as we are dealing with numerous internet connections and sometimes this may cause a slight delay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Sammy Winter will be your Zoom host for today. Gordon Sutherland will be the officer presenting during the meeting. Matt Seven is here to offer IT support if required and Christina Webb will be clerking the meeting today. During the meeting, all participants except for the chairman will be muted and this should remain during the whole of the meeting unless you have asked to speak. I take this opportunity to remind members that all members are invited to participate in the meeting, but would ask that you use the raise hand button which can be found at the bottom of the participant screen should you wish to speak on any matter. The chairman will be notified of your request and he will then invite you forward to speak. Once you have been called forward to speak, please could we ask you to unmute yourself and then once spoken, mute yourself again. Anyone who has telephoned into the meeting will be invited to speak after all those that have raised their hands have spoken. When asking a question, please could we ask members or officers to refer to page number within the report or agenda for ease. If we have to adjourn the meeting today, the chairman will advise of this and the anticipated length of adjournment. When voting on an application today, this will be undertaken by a roll call of those members present. Once your name is called, please unmute yourself and respond accordingly. When confirming the minutes and noting delegated and appeal decisions today, unless any member raises an objection on these matters, these will be confirmed by assent. Members can only partake in voting on an application today if they have been present for the entire discussion on an application. Chair, if I just undertake a roll call of members present. Councillor Anderson. Present. Councillor Bird. Present. Councillor Candon. Present. Councillor Fairhead. Present. Councillor Flaxman-Taylor. Present. Councillor Freeman. Present. Councillor Hammond. Present. Councillor Lawn. Present. Councillor Myers. Present. Councillor Wainwright. Present. Councillor Williamson. Present. Councillor Barbara Wright. Present. Thank you, Councillor Tony Wright. Present. Thank you. Chairman, sorry, apologies. I should have confirmed that um, Councillor Candon is here as substitution for Councillor Mogford today. Um, officers we have present in the meeting, we have Caroline Watling, Monitoring Officer, Dean Mims, Planning Manager, Gordon Sutherland, Senior Planning Officer, Christina Webb, Executive Services Officer, and myself, Sammy Winter, Corporate Services Manager. We also have Chloe Ingram, um, our present communications officer, joining us today. Thank you, thank Sammy. You. Thanks, Chairman. We can now proceed with the agenda. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we've done um, apologies for absence. So we move to item number two. Uh, have we any declarations of interest, please? Councillor Freeman. Councillor Freeman. You're just muted, Councillor Freeman. Yeah, I was, my, <laughs> Sorry. Picture, my picture had moved. Um, yeah, just internal drainage board, as it's mentioned in the, um, in the paperwork. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Freeman, sorry, just to confirm, do you sit as a member on the internal drainage board? Yeah, I do indeed, yes. Lovely, thank you. Councillor Fairhead? Yeah, Councillor Fairhead? Yes. I, I too sit on the uh, into the drainage board, so I have to declare that. I'm never quite sure if we should or not, but we seem to do it, so it's best. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank Any, you. Anybody along else? With, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, along with myself, I'm st on, the, on that committee as well. Okay. Thank you. Chairman, just to confirm, we have also had David Gleason, Director of Planning and Grace, join us in the meeting today as well. Yep. Thank yep. you. That's it. Nobody else? No other declarations? No. No? Okay, then. Um, so we move to item number three, um, which is the application for the former Pontins Holiday Centre, Beach Road, Hemsby, Great Yarmouth, pages 5 to 24 of your agenda. And that's uh, with Senior Planning Officer Gordon Sutherland to present. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just pull up a presentation. Gordon, apologies, you're quite quiet. I don't know whether you could just turn the volume up on your computer. Well, I'll, I'll move the mic a bit. That That's might help. better. Thank you. Hmm. 
Right. Are you seeing that? Yes, we are. Yep. OK, um, there's quite a number of slides. It's it's a, you know, a fairly substantial uh, application. So I'll before we get into the meat of the report, I'll, I'll run through the slides and we can always go back if there are any questions. So uh, this is the former Pontins Holiday um, Centre site in Hemsby. Um, you've got Kingsway down here, back market lane up here. Beach Road here and hiding under there. <laughs> um, just trying to get the right name, Newport Road. Yeah. Um, and you'll see from this, the site edge red identifies the substantial number of existing buildings on the site. Um, this part of the, of the OS is out of date now. A lot, a lot of these have been demolished, but you'll see there's a substantial number of existing holiday blocks on here. There's about 42 blocks in total. So this is just a, a little bit of uh, context. You've got Kingsway uh, looking towards uh, uh, Great Yarmouth and Kingsway looking back towards Winterton. This is the existing access on Beach Road. And at the bottom right, you've got uh, one of the typical blocks, um, or you can see a row of the blocks facing towards back market lane. Internal to the site, you can see um, large areas of open space surrounding the, uh, the blocks, um, which you can see are um, in a dilapidated state, although uh, they are being um, renovated um, currently. Again, some more typical shots for you. This is one of the blocks which you can see is a, a concrete block with a cantilever um, um, balcony and stairs at the side to give access. And then a number of blocks in the bottom left, that's down towards the, the um, southern end of the site. More shots on site. This is looking towards Newport Road. And to the right are some of the units facing Kingsway. Again, looking at the site, uh, you can see the top left is just a shot through to some of the open space. The building in the far distance is the existing swimming pool. And then the picture on the bottom right is the existing swimming pool. Again, some more shots um, of these buildings. And the reason I'm showing you these is it's important that um, the, the proposal is retrofitting is, uh, is um, using these um, shells to form new dwellings. So the concrete structure, the concrete shell of the building is what's being renovated. So here's a, a shot again of uh, some of the stripped out units so you can get an idea of what they are, the shell. Um, and uh, the bottom right is you know, looking into those units. So this is a, a shot of the existing um, units and what I want to draw your attention to is the the actual shell. Um, in this case if you follow my cursor this is concrete party wall so you've got kind of an L shape for these units. And so that's important to bear in mind when we come to the actual um, conversion works. There's a limitation on what you can actually achieve with the building because of that that structure so your dwelling is going to be an l-shaped dwelling in the case of those units some uh, one of the other typical types is the two-bed flat that they're converting planning to convert and again you've got a, you've got a, a straight party wall so in this case you've got a, a square house if you like so just wanted to draw that to your attention so uh, helpfully the um, applicants have um, sought to demonstrate how the, the buildings can be converted. So the shell in the top left is, is one of those units that's basically been stripped down. Uh, and that was about um, September time um, where they had stripped it to that point. And then top right and bottom right are uh, is that structure now uh, having been um, filled in underneath the cantilevered um, 
balcony, what was the balcony. So it's been extended out towards the length of the balcony. And then they've gone up with a, a gable um, to, the, to the front of those units. And then this shot, um, again, is, is a, a front shot of those units under construction, reconstruction. And here's a shot around the back. So this is the rear of the units. Um, so you can see the, the block work that's being put in, the windows, the cladding, and the roofing to give a pitched roof. So you can kind of compare that to the unit on your right, which is again, one of the typical uh, uh, units, which is um, to be converted. So here's a, an overall um, master plan um, for the area. The area in green is what would be residential. Those units would be turned from um, holiday units to uh, residential units. The area in yellow identifies the recreation leisure center, um, a small shopping uh, group of shops with flats over and a convenience store here. So these are accessed off of Kingsway and you access off Kingsway and the houses would be ac off, accessed off Kingsway, new access off Kingsway with no uh, access between running between. So the area in pink um, is the what would be retained as holiday lets down here and then new um, lodges in here. And again, this would be accessed off of Beach Road, but there is no vehicular connection between these three areas. It's just bicycle and pedestrian. Okay. So this is a very busy picture of the, the master layout showing all the, all the units colored up. Um, and I'll just move swiftly on because I've broken it down into two. So you can kind of um, uh, get a slightly better idea. So all these kind of uh, swirly movements here, these represent the turning movements for um, vehicles, refuse vehicles to demonstrate within the um, existing uh, network, internal network of the site that um, vehicles can make that turning movement. So again, here are the lodges. These units here going towards back market lane are uh, residential units. This is the leisure center swimming pool, the small parade of shops, the convenience store. And then the, the bottom end of the site again. So this is, these are the units um, formed around spaces. So these would be green spaces, uh, um, which the units would overlook uh, with their rear gardens. And these are parking spaces. So anything that you can see like this is a parking space. So the, the idea here is retrofitting those units um, around creating space facing onto that space with rear gardens, parking, and retention of the trees and large areas of open space. Overall on site, um, I'll just uh, find a figure for you. I think we're talking about um, seven, seven, um, 13,576 square meters, about 1.35 hectares of open space. Um, so, the existing open space that I showed you in the earlier slides is being uh, retained and used uh, for the benefit of the, the development. And that is almost double what you would normally expect um, with regards to a, a new residential development. Okay, so here are some of the um, helpful visuals to uh, show how these units would um, be converted. So these are typical um, residential units. So again, you've got you've gone from the flat roof two story with um, um, access points to now having um, gables and a pitched roof um, clad and uh, tiled. Here is a, a visual of the the lodges in the uh, top northern corner. So this is kind of a, a fan fanned out arrangement of those lodges. Here is a the the leisure centre and. The bottom part of the slide shows the access off of Beach Road um, supplemented by additional planting. This visual shows you the um, convenience store. So, um, and then this I, um, building here would be the three shops, three ground floor shops with um, um, 
space to go with storage space to go with those and then above those three three flats and again this is a visual looking through um, that um, that part of the development so here's a, a visual of the leisure center the recreation center so the swimming pool is here and within here you've got the uh, changing rooms sauna um, gymnasium on the upper floor and space within and you've got a, a kind of a, um, a section through just to give you an idea of what that would be like this is the internal layout of the the leisure center with the swimming pool as i was mentioning uh, the sauna and the some seating areas and uh, various areas within and again this is a little um, close-up of that um, convenience store the parade um, and up here is the um, recreation center so they all have parking uh, independent parking to go with those so parking for the uh, recreation center parking for the store parking for the retail units and this parking here is for the uh, residential units so on your right is just a kind of a um, is a floor plan of the the flats uh, elevations of the the three the, the store so you've got the ground floor retail units and then above you've got the the flats so you've got stairs going up to the flats and there's um, storage to the rear of the of the um, uh, retail store um, again just a, a floor plan showing the service yard and the retail area it's about uh, 800 square feet 900 square feet each unit um, here's some elevations of the convenience store um, so you've got um, cedar cladding uh, timber cladding um, aluminium canopy um, standing metal steam metal seam roof um, and here's just a floor plan showing that sales area and the uh, storage area and service yard. And then here's a, a typical, um, there's about five or six different um, house types. The blocks lend themselves to being converted into about six different um, different units, but this is a typical finish of, of the unit. So again, you've got the, the pitched roof, the cladding, uh, the, the windows, um, rendering over the block work. Um, and again, a horizontal cladding uh, and some side elevations which um, I'm, I'm not seeing that you're, you're hiding <laughs> hiding them for me um, and then the floor plan so again right back to what I was talking about at the beginning the the structure of the concrete um, frame means that uh, you've got this kind of L shape on ground floor and first floor so that's a unit so you have this L shape in some of the units. Okay, and then this is one of the ones that has the, you know, the, the, the square frame, if you like. So again, you see some more standard square party wall. Okay. Right, so I'll take you back to the, to the body of the report. Um, just give you an interesting slide to look at while we're talking. one of the more interesting ones right okay so turning to the body of the report um, the site in total is uh, 22 almost 22 acres and it's the former Pontins holiday center um, to the um, west you've got the Florida holiday park and the Bermuda holiday park the site is located outside of the village envelope um, in the save 2001 borough wide local plan um, and the site is currently identified on in the local plan as a holiday accommodation. Um, notwithstanding this, the Holiday Center closed in 2009 and has been vacant since that time. Uh, the, the former holiday chalets and other buildings and structures remain on the site and in a derelict condition subject to va continuing vandalism and arson. In July of 2019, the site was granted a resolution to approve planning um, permission subject to a section 106 for demolition of those buildings and redevelopment of the site for 190 dwellings, retail development and holiday accommodation with associated open space. 
The site has now been uh, included in a, as a draft allocation in the council's emerging local plan. The policy, emerging policy supports the broad type of um, development that is proposed here um, uh, by the existing planning permission. And um, whilst providing further detailed site-specific guidance to bring the development forward, the local plan part two uh, has been subject to um, public consultation. Um, and now is um, before the inspector to determine at a public examination the soundness of the of the plan, and that's going to take place in um, March and April. So the proposal itself is, as I said, uh, for the redevelopment and adaption of the existing site. Um, so it includes the refurbishment and modification of those existing buildings to provide residential accommodation, the swimming pool, cafe, um, and development works to provide a retail store. Uh, holiday accommodation and associated space. So in total, we have 188 dwellings um, made up of about 13 one-bed flats, six two-bed flats, 107 two-bed houses, 62 three-bed houses. And the dwellings would be served off um, from estate roads and private drives, uh, gaining access off of uh, new access points on King's Way. Um, each two and three bed dwelling has two parking spaces and each one bed unit has one parking space. Uh, each will have their own private garden. So actually I'll go to the layout. So as we're talking about that at the point, this point. Yeah, so um, here you can see it's served by these loop roads and private drives with access points off of Kingsway. So as I mentioned in uh, the beginning, there's no vehicular connection between the holiday lets um, and the um, residential or between the, um, the new store and the residential area. So they have independent accesses off of King's Way with separate car parks. Uh, the layout is largely dictated um, by the location of the existing buildings on site, which are being adapted. The units um, are within those terraces and they have areas of open space around them uh, and retained um, as, as well as the open space. Let me see, large area of open space, um, which will be the um, um, foreground, if you like, of the, the leisure um, and leisure centre and swimming pool. Um, and indeed, so it has this leisure centre um, adjoining the existing swimming pool with a reception, cafe, changing, spa and gym facilities. Um, <clears throat> to enhance services available within the development um, and the village, as, as I identified, there's a, this proposal for a block of three retail units with flats over. And the convenience store. So um, the, the, the retail units measure about 900 square feet in total um, and um, the, the separate small store is about 3,300 square feet. So it's likely to be attractive, attractive to a convenience operator. Um, and as I say, parking is provided with each of those uh, independent uses. The developer's intention is to provide 20% of the dwellings um, with parking spaces uh, having el electric vehicle charging points. Um, this is kind of ahead of the um, anticipated building regulations. So um, turning to consultations and representations, that these are all set out in the report. Um, what I would do is draw your attention to um, conversations with the um, Highways Authority. At the time of writing the report, we are, haven't had the formal recommendation from Highways, um, but informally, we understand that it's content with the exterior means of access to the development. However, uh, due to the constraints provided by the locations of the existing buildings um, on the site, though, say for renovation, um, it would not achieve um, a new build standard specification, um, including some sight lines within the site. So that, that's acknowledged. Um, and as such, highways, the Highways Authority is unlikely to adopt the interior roads network and would require it to become long-term responsibility of a management company to be established for the lifetime of the development. That's not unusual. Um, and 
um, would be a um, a a um, condition of the Section 106 agreement to to go with the development for long term maintenance and uh, um, control of that in the same way that we would anticipate with um, sustainable urban drainage and the open space. So moving to the actual um, analysis of the, the whole presentation. Um, responses set out within the, um, the report itself of representations received. Um, in addition to those set out in the report, we had two, two um, ones came through in the last day or so with the announcement that it was going to committee, uh, one of which was um, uh, asking whether um, uh, uh, homeless um, accommodation could be provided by the development for um, folks who've been um, homeless within the Hemsby area, uh, and also um, representations with regards to flood alleviation, long-term maintenance of the open space. And those issues have largely been dealt with in the report itself. And the the uh, long term management and um, control of the um, the recreation facility. So um, the issues, therefore, before you, um, accepting that we now have a, um, a five year supply as of um, uh, December, are uh, around amenity, and in this case, the development is really renovating existing structures on site that were formerly holiday accommodation. Um, it's considered that the layout, including the new cabins at the north of the site, would safeguard amenity of adjoining property and would not be materially worse than any existing situation. Um, nevertheless, uh, the applicant has agreed to install uh, external louvers to holiday block E, the, this block here, um, to protect and minimize um, overlooking of adjoining property. So a condition is recommended to, to, uh, to control that. That's this block here. Uh, the dwellings, as I say, are set out in along a state road and private drives with dwellings fronting onto, you know, uh, substantial areas of open space um, for focal points. So amenity for uh, future uh, inhabitants. The proposal does include provision of a leisure centre and gymnasium, uh, spa, footways, cycleways, and will support active living. With regards to services, studies and assessments submitted with the application demonstrate that utilities can be provided. The health authority considers the development will impact on primary and acute care services and has requested a financial con contribution. Um, I'll come to that shortly. Um, it lies within the primary holiday area, um, although the site um, was designated as such. It has now been put forward um, in the local plan as a um, housing site uh, with a mix of proposed uses as per this application. In terms of retail impact, this is a small scale retail development um, forming part of the mixed use. The primary um, unit is about 595 square meters or 474 square meters of retail space. And the three small units are about 82 square meters each. So this level of provision would provide benefits to um, the existing community and based on previous retail impact assessment would um, have a neg neg I can't say, negligible effect on Great Yarmouth or other retail centers. Affordable housing. Is set out in the report that um, as per paragraph 63 of the National Planning Policy Framework, in a case where you are um, reusing um, brownfield land, vacant buildings, um, this can be um, proportionately reduced against any need for affordable housing. So in this case, no affordable housing is uh, being provided or would be required to be provided. Viability, the applicant has provided a, a full viability assessment with the application, which indicates um, that um, it would not be viable to make um, either affordable housing contributions or other um, substantial section uh, um, community infrastructure requests. Um, the assessment does take account of the gifting of the leisure centre and swimming pool um, to the management to a management company. Um, and um, 
additional financial con contributions would worsen that viability on a pound for pound basis. This is um, approach is concurred with by uh, our um, consultation with our property services um, colleagues. Um, so they, they basically concur with that assessment. So the applicant is committed to making necessary contributions with regards to libraries, fire hydrants, um, habitats, regulations, uh, mitigation, um, and of course is providing the um, recreation center uh, swimming pool, which is something in the order of three to four million pounds worth of, um, of um, public facility or of, of, of uh, recreational facility. Um, as set out in the report, um, the health authority did request a contribution towards primary and acute care, um, but it's, um, it's considered that the hospital requirement may not be justified given the wider plans for capital investment by central government, which have been announced, and further the requirement towards intermediate and mental health uh, beds also lacks justification. And as I previously mentioned, the viability assessment uh, identifies that contribution towards facilities or other additional investment um, for community infrastructure would decrease the viability of the development. So overall, it's considered that uh, the proposal represents the best opportunity probably in the last decade to regenerate the area and remove dereliction and provide dwellings to deliver the local authorities' housing requirements. In this case, the site is identified in the local plan. Um, the location is sustainable. It will result in regeneration um, and create a living environment in landscaped, extensive landscape grounds whilst retaining mature trees and substantial areas of open space. It will protect amenity of neighbouring property, add a leisure centre and swimming pool for use by the community, as well as enhancing local retail opportunities for convenient shopping. The application provides, um, improves upon the um, previous outline approval in that it provides a mix of uses, including the renovation and retention of 53 holiday units and uh, 38 new holiday lodges. So given the well-documented need for the borough to address its housing allocation targets, it's considered the proposal is a pragmatic way to both regenerate and deliver new homes. And it would be um, recommended that the application is approved subject to conditions and the completion of a section 106 agreement. Approval would also be subject to conditions including but not limited to approval of a refreshed habitats regulation assessment. Um, <clears throat> conditions to safeguard and remediate any contamination that may be discovered during an, uh, an intrusive investigation, limitation of hours of construction, recording of any archeology span uncovered, provision of fire hydrants, measures uh, to specified by the lead local flood authority and by the highways authority, details of boundary treatments to be agreed, um, provision of external louvers on block E as before mentioned. Um, and additionally, we would recommend that um, given the smaller size of gardens generally that um, permitted development rights for future extensions of the dwellings uh, be removed. Uh, and finally, it would be subject to completion of a Section 106 agreement to secure the Recreation Centre, its long-term um, future, any financial infrastructure payments that are re reasonably required, um, and, um, and the um, Section 106 monitoring fees. So final conclusion is that the proposal complies with policies as set out in the um, core strategy, emerging local plan and the existing borough-wide local plan. Chair, sorry, that was a bit of a long canter. No, thanks, Gordon. A very detailed presentation. Very good. Um, thank you. Um, any technical questions from any councillors, please? Uh, yeah. Councillor yeah. Wainwright? Yes, Mr Chairman, thank you. Um, Gordon, could you just um, confirm when we passed the application on the 10th of July, 19, which was residential, retail and holiday, did that include any affordable housings within that application? Yes, um, there was, I think this was, you were dealing with a, a new build um, so the situation was different. No, no, I, I appreciate that was different. I appreciate this one is different. I just wondered yeah. what the percentage was on the previous application was 
for affordable housing? Was it the 20%? It, it would have been the 20% as required by policy, yes. Okay, so the only real difference with this application, obviously the blocks are being redeveloped, is the leisure centre really, is, is that the case? Because obviously we've got retail, um, a holiday and residential, as we had last time. So it's a, very, it's a similar mix, yes. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was twenty percent in the last application. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Myers. Councillor Myers. Oh, thank you. Just a, a quick technical question, really. Um, <clears throat> looking at nine eleven, um, where there is no affordable housing because it's uh, not an increased footprint because they're refurbishing. Um, there is no increase in floor space on the residential element of the scheme. Um, I couldn't actually see very clearly on the internal diagram of the buildings and the layout of them, given that chalets are normally not excessively large. And I know that they're now pushed over a, a two storeys to, to give it that extra floor space. Do the rooms, uh, bathrooms and et cetera, meet uh, at least the minimum requirements one would expect um, on a new build as opposed to just a refurb? Uh, they are... Um less than a new build you you have got the restriction of the frame and then as i say they have built out um extended out with the the um the balcony area so they are um the three bed units um for instance um a new build standard would be around um 84 square meters they these are coming in at 80 and for a two bed unit, a new build standard would be uh, around 70. These are coming in around 63 and 68. And a new build for a one bed would be about um, 30, 35. And these are coming in at about 34 to 37. So they're around about, they're not um, absolutely on the money, but I think we have to bear in mind that this is a, um, a retrofitting of existing structures. And I can advise that given that careful consideration and looked at the internal layouts of the units, um, they do achieve um, good room sizes for both bedrooms and living rooms. They are you know, what you would expect a um, bedroom and living room to achieve. Thank you. Could you uh, actually send me over the uh, dimensions of those, please? That would be most helpful. Yep, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Is that Councillor Fairhead? Councillor Fairhead, then? sorry. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Fairhead. Thank you. Yes, this might sound a bit of a silly query, but you talk, when you were talking through, you were talking about cladding. You were cladding the um, uh, the the new build, the redevelopment of the concrete buildings, and I presume the cladding is not what has been used in the past, and uh, that's all checked out and that's safe. Just a query, really. Yeah, I can understand your question. Um, my understanding is it's it will meet building regulations requirements. It's uh, it's a, a composite um, um, product. I would um, defer, if if you wish, to the agent when the agent has an opportunity to say they can confirm. Um, but um, it's you know it's it's more likely to be you know a fibre cement type product um, for for the existing dwellings. I think. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Williamson. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. I'm just getting, I just wondering about the number of parking spaces for the leisure centre. Is the leisure centre going to be open to the public? And are there sufficient parking spaces for leisure centres of that nature? Uh, my understanding is yes, that um, um, in order for the, you know, the viability of the recreation centre it's, itself, they will be encouraging community use. And parking is provided. Let me see if I can find a slide a bit closer. So you're not actually seeing the leisure centre here, but this is so you've got so you've got 28 spaces in here. Yes. So there's is the centre. Is that considered there. sufficient for a leisure centre? I would I would double have to double check against any standards, but we certainly haven't had anything from highways as to any deficiency with regards to provision of car spaces. Okay, Councillor Williamson. Thank you. Yep. Any other technical questions, please? Uh, no further hands raised, Chairman. Okay. 
Um, thank you. Um, so now we call on uh, Mr. Simon Henry, um, the applicant's agent. Mr. Henry? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Hi. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Henry. So you have five minutes, Mr. Henry, and I'll let you know when you have 30 seconds remaining. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening. Hello, good afternoon everyone. I'm Simon Henry of Parker Planning Services, the agent for this application. Before I start, I feel I must thank the Planning Officer Gordon Sutherland for his helpful and proactive communication whilst he has overseen this application. They have been refreshing and very much appreciated. The application before you today is a mixed use scheme comprising of 188 dwellings and 91 holiday lodges to let, following partial demolitions, new shop, leisure center with a gym and spa, cafe, and communal areas with associated highways works. The applicant purchased the site early in 2020 with the vision of providing a development and facilities which would serve Hemsby and the surrounding area well. They wanted to deliver a scheme which local people would be happy to see after a period of dereliction and decay on a prominent site within the village. The past issues to do with vandalism and arsons are well documented and I will not dwell on these here. However, the brief was to involve the local community at the earliest opportunity, and this was done by a public consultation, which was carried out online due to COVID-19 restrictions, and also by early and continuing communication with the parish council, who shared the applicant's view that regenerating the site is the best way forward. When restrictions allowed, there, was, there were a number of on-site meetings attended by the parish council, where proactive and positive engagement resulted in the proposals which are before you today. These discussions were held in tandem with conversations with the planning officers to ensure a scheme that could be delivered and provide substantial benefits to the wider community could be brought forward. As you're aware, the site already benefits from outline consent granted in 2019. That consent env envisaged that the site would be cleared of all existing buildings and a new development would be proposed. When the applicant took over the ownership of the site, their first thoughts was to reuse as many of the existing buildings as possible to not only respect the site's former use, but also to create what will be a truly unique development. The centrepiece of the development is the Community Leisure Centre, which utilises the swimming pool from the former holiday park, brings it back into use, and adds additional facilities such as a gym and cafe. In addition, the existing holiday chalets are proposed to reuse the existing structure by internal remodelling and renovating them to a high standard. The benefit of this is it provides cost-effective housing, as the vast majority of the new units will be two- and three-bedroom properties. A help to buy scheme will be put in place so that they will be available and within reach for first time buyers. In addition, the new dwellings will benefit from a 10 year warranty. It is proposed that the construction works will use local labour and firms to be used for, for the build process. This will include sourcing of materials and any further support services required during the construction period. It is anticipated that the site will be completed within the next two years, with work beginning on the holiday lets and residential units first in the southern part of the site. The plan is to move gradually into the centre of the site, which will then include the Community Leisure Centre. As well as being funded by the earlier stages of the construction period, it will also ensure that users of the Leisure Centre do not have to travel to a construction site to access the facilities for subsequent health and safety considerations. Throughout the application process, it has been supported by technical documentation, which in all aspects have demonstrated that a viable development can occur on this site. Extensive investigations with regards to drainage, ecology, trees, highways and archaeology have taken place and will continue to as the proposals develop. As with the planning officers, the applicant has worked proactively with the external consultees to ensure a scheme could be delivered. The site is covered by the Emerging Local Plan Policy HY1 and the proposals which are before you today reflect the spirit behind the policy. The mixed use nature of the scheme, the retention of significant trees, and the provision of accesses off Beach Road and Kingsway only are all included within the site layout plan. In the final analysis, this scheme delivers a vast, vast array of social, economic and environmental benefits simultaneously. It's regenerating a site that has been derelict and subject to vandalism for more than a decade. Whilst the whole site will not be brought back to its former holiday park use, a significant number of holiday decks are included in the proposals, which will sit alongside existing provision within the village. Given the current economic situation, new jobs will be created through the community leisure centre and shops, together with site management for the whole site, which is very important. It is therefore considered that the benefits of the scheme outweigh any perceived harm by a considerable degree. 30 seconds remaining, Simon, thank you. And I would hope members would be minded to agree with their officer 
and approve this important application, not just for Hemsby, but also the wider area. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Hendry. Um, any councillors got any technical questions for the agent, please? Councillor Tony Wright. Yeah, Councillor Wright. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, just a, a very quick one. In terms of the development itself, do you plan to start both the residential and the holiday together, or is it, are you going to finish one before the other? Um, the plan is to to run them concurrently. So, I mean, there's there's no such there's not really any phases as such, but they'll start the holiday lets um, on the northern part of the site and the residential the southern part. And basically, the idea is that the development will run on both ends, eventually ending up in the middle and finishing off the the community leisure centre. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other technical questions for the agent, please? Councillor Wainwright. No, oh, sorry. No, I couldn't sorry. see the answer. Sorry. Yeah. You just muted Councillor Wainwright. You muted Trevor. Just a, just a question for the uh, agent. Yep. Obviously, there is no um, affordable housing in this uh, development, Simon, now because of obviously of the viability with the, um, with the leisure centre. Was it explored that there could be any affordable housing at all? I appreciate it may not have been 20%, but was it looked at that it could have been 5%, 10%? Was that considered? Or was it just not viable to have any at all? Uh, yes, it was considered. So when the viability assessment was, was drawn up, the uh, consultant who, who, who wrote it, he, um, he, he went through all scenarios. So he started at the best case scenario of, Providing 20% affordables, and they slowly went down the percentages and, and concluded that in, until we got to 0%, there was no, um, it, it wasn't viable. The scheme would not be able to be brought forward as it in, in its current state. And obviously, it would be a trade off regarding the, the, the ledger's use as well. So, um, you know, we, the, the client and, and we as agents and, and, and the, the application team have always felt that providing the leisure centre is, is such an important aspect of this application, um, not just for Hemsby, but also for the wider area. So, um, you know, without trading off that, it was always going to be very difficult to provide the affordable housing. So in answer to your question, yes, it was considered, but all, all percentages just didn't work out. Okay, thank you. Any other technical questions for the agent, please? No. no further hands raised, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Henry, for your time and your input. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I now call on Ward Councillor uh, Councillor James Bensley, please. Hello, Sammy. Hello, Chair. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Bensley, you have five minutes, and I'll let you know when you have thirty seconds remaining. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Members. Wow, uh, this development has been like. Brexit in the heart of the village for quite a long time. Although I'm disappointed that a full tourism solution wasn't achieved for this site, can I say after a decade of fighting against Northern Trust proposals and lots of community engagement from the start, this now is the most suitable site for all. This derelict site that has been placed in a managed decline for too long with the previous owners working against the community and not with it or for it now democracy and the committee has given outlining planning approval for this site a full application improves on that great yarmouth borough council development control committee deserves great credit in refusing previous applications and i know myself and colleagues have had passionate debates about this but now is the time to move on and this has divided the village for more than 10 years great credit has to go to the officers who have been on this since the start can I please also strongly encourage the members of this committee to vote for this very exciting and unique application. Even now, during the pandemic, we have wonderful opportunities like this in our great borough, which is attracting lots of positive interest and not just in Hemsby. People working on this site now, some in walking distance, learning new skills and building for Hemsby's future.
reusing and regenerating the derelict buildings, keeping it as green as possible with an attractive living environment, whilst also enhancing our fabulous tourism industry and creating new all year round employment opportunities. Health and mental health well-being in the form of the new leisure centre will be vital for the northern parishes and this plan delivers that. Unlocking this site's full potential will be amazing for Hemsby and the borough. So please, thank you all for your time and for listening. Thank you, Councillor Bensley. Has any uh, members got any questions for the ward councillor, please? No, no hands raised, Chairman. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Bensley, for your time and input also. Thank you. Uh, so we now move to uh, the debate and the decision. That's uh, over to the committee and, and how they feel. Councillor Camden. Councillor Camden. Thanks, Sammy. Uh, yes, Chair, uh, I, think that, I think this is a really a fantastic example of uh, regeneration here. Um, not only is it fantastic for the borough as a whole, but more importantly, for the community of Hemsby, um, it, it delivers on housing in the form of houses for large families, but also on houses for single person households. Um, it delivers on the local economy as well. Um, uh, hopefully in the aim of extending to maybe a 52 week economy in Hemsby and building on the already well established local hospitality economy that is there. So all in all, I, th I think this is a great um, subject for approval and I fully support it. Thank you, uh, Councillor Camden. Who's next, Sammy? Is it Councillor Wright? Councillor Tony Wright, Chairman. Yeah, yeah, Tony Wright. Thanks, Chairman. Yes, I, I think this is one of probably the best um, developments that could have come out of this particular um, um, episode that we've had from the last 10 years when the debate on what should happen. I think it's, it needs to be done very, very quickly. Uh, and this is a development that we should probably support. I think the only disappointment is obviously the, the lack of affordable housing. Um, but that has been explained um, quite well in terms of what you can and what you can't do. Um, and of course, using the existing buildings in many of the cases as well, environmental is sound and uh, presumably lo using local labour as well will create opportunities uh, for the local population. I think the development itself um, should be given the uh, approval today because I think it is uh, an excellent development to come out of the negotiations and I just think um, this will be good for the village and certainly good um, for the town but as I said the only uh, sad thing is that the, the lack of the affordable housing aspect of this but, but overall I think it should be supported by the committee. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Um, Myers. Yeah, Councillor Myers. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, again, uh, I'd echo uh, Councillor Wright and uh, Councillor Wainwright with regards to affordable housing. It is disappointing, but if it's not economically viable, it's not. And the development of the site is long overdue. I think with the leisure centre, it's really important. My only concern is, is that the development of the leisure centre and its financial viability and maintaining it when they're talking pulling it out to um, a management company. And I just hope that it, it does develop in the way it does. It is delivered and does provide um, those facilities, uh, which are, of course, uh, contribute to there being uh, no affordable housing. So that's just my only concern that that leisure aspect of it is fully delivered. Thank you. Yeah, thank that's you. That's Lorraine Wright. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just echo what uh, Councillor Wright and Moyer have said. Um, it is disappointing that uh, there's no affordable housing in this um, development, but I do understand the reasons. I mean, I've been involved, I think, with this since about 2009 when it closed with all the various planning applications. And this certainly is the best, um, best application that's ever come forward. So I applaud that. And uh, it will be of economic benefit, not just to Hemsby, but to the whole, um, the whole of the borough, because you know people will probably go and use the facilities there as well. So I'll be quite happy to move all the recommendations as laid out. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Flaxman Taylor. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just want to echo what Daniel Candon says. Um, fantastic opportunity for Hemsby and all the extended families around somewhere for them to move to. 
I just have concerns like Adrian regarding the leisure centre being built. I hope it doesn't come back later down the line and is then changed for more housing. Um, I don't know if there's anything we can put in there in a, under the conditions. Um, I just hope that we do see the leisure facilities there as well as the tourism facilities. Um, but I would, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in favour for the application. And I definitely would support it, but I just want to make sure that we do have them leisure facilities on site. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williamson, yeah? Yes, thank you. I also support the application. But my concern as well, as Councillor, uh, as I said before, that the leisure facilities, we have a very small parking number. If you're going to make a leisure facility viable, then it needs a turnover of people, quite a number of people to go through a leisure centre. If you've got saunas and things of that nature, a gym as well, and a swimming pool, it does require great numbers. And my concern is the same as Emma's, that we could end up having this not being built in the end because it's not seen to be viable. So if we could put some kind of condition that's essential this is built as a facility for Hemsby in the area around Hemsby, I would agree with it. But I do support the application, but I'm just really concerned about the viability of the leisure centre and the parking therewith. Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Um, Gordon, is there something that could be put in place as a condition regarding that point, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, by way of the Section 106 agreement, um, we can tie tie it that way and I'm actually going to let uh, defer to Dean uh, because he's been involved in this for a very long time okay and would like to say something yeah, if you could just yeah that's fine yeah Dean you're muted Dean Apologies, Dean, you're still muted. Yeah, D Dean would love to speak, but he's going into <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> but essentially, yes. Um, do, I mean, I can put this on microphone if you want to come and stand by my shoulder. Yeah. Chairman, just so Councillor Hammond doesn't think, I haven't seen his yeah. hand. Yeah, well, I, I can see yeah. he wants yeah. to speak as well. So yeah. We'll yeah, that's okay. fine. So, so relaying what Dean is saying is basically the existing 106 um, uh, made provision for the, the recreation um, use of the site. And there will be a 106 accompanying this permission as well, which again, we can lay out that it should be provided and it should be maintained um, at, you know, as that facility in perpetuity. Okay. Okay, um, Councillor Hammond. I'm mute. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I fully support this. It, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful proposal. Um, I think the leisure facility is going to be there because it's going to feed the holiday part of the development as much as the residential. And I'd like to move to approve. Okay. Um, anybody else wish to speak? No, Sammy, no. No, no further. Oh, sorry, Councillor Candon, Chair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to second that um, that movement, please, Sammy. Thank you. Okay, yes. Um, yeah, I'd just like to say this is the, the best I've ever seen for this site um, since I've been a councillor since 2014. Um, this has been a headache, this site. There's been applications backwards and forwards. And um, that's great to see this coming forward. And the, I feel the best solution that we have got now for this site. And uh, yes, I, I fully approve of this being passed. That is absolutely amazing um, and, and brilliant for, for everybody concerned, I feel. Excellent okay. idea all around. Okay. Um, so nobody else wish to speak um, at this point. So we'll go to um, the roll call and Sammy will, will call you out. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Bird? Four. Sorry. It's okay, Councillor Camden? Four. Councillor Fairhead? Four. Councillor Flaxman Taylor? Four. 
Chairman, I think we lost Councillor Freeman, so I'm not sure if his computer was doing an update, so I haven't been able to get him back on just yet, although he was present for the entire discussion. So he is actually my attendee, so I'll just promote him back. He has been here through the yep. duration, so he is able yeah, to vote. He's, he's there, just yeah. had the update, so I can now take his vote. Councillor Freeman? Four. Councillor Hammond? Four. Councillor Lorne? Four. Councillor Myers? Four. Councillor Wainwright? Four. Councillor Williamson? Four. Councillor B. Wright? Four. And Councillor T. Wright? Four. Thank you, Chairman. That is approved as per the recommendations. Thank you. That is fantastic news uh, for the borough. Um, thanks, everyone. So we move to um, item number four, um, appeal decisions. Uh, Dean, um, you got something to say? <clears throat> if you can speak or, or Gordon do that. So... Anything you want to say, Dean? Or no. Okay. I'm advised the property was outside the uh, village limits, um, not in a sustainable location, and uh, refused or dismissed on that basis. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody. Um, great. Apologies, Chairman. We've just got a hand raised from Councillor Myers. Sorry. Yeah, Councillor Myers. Thank you, Chair. Could I have a, um, uh, that's in my ward, could I have a the detailed uh, decision on that, please? Yes, <laughs> we'll send it to you. <laughs> okay, all Very right. Thank yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, thanks very much for your time today. Um, so um, I close the meeting at five past five. Um, see you in, all in two weeks.